Hello, good afternoon. It's four to five days to the presidential and parliamentary elections. Welcome to Joy News today. We're live on DSTV channel 421, Go TV channel 125, all social media handles and around the world on myjoyonline.com. I am MFA Akosia Adeti. Top stories this hour. Now, Joy News uncovered the destruction of large tracts of Asinanyo Forest Reserve, a beneficiary of the Ghana Landscape Restoration Project. And there's details in the bulletin. Also, presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party, NPP, Dr. Mohamed Dubaumia, wades into the majority-minority saga, ridicules attempt by the National Democratic Congress, NDC, to become majority in parliament six weeks to the general elections. we we'll give you updates from the National Science and Math Quiz as well. We've got these plus business news, sports news, and world news in this package. Do stay for more details. Welcome back. Now let's start with illegal mining because Joy News has uncovered the destruction of large tracts of the Asinanyo Forest Reserve, a beneficiary of the Ghana Landscape Restoration Project. A number of citrullina trees grown during the restoration project have been pulled down despite ongoing calls for a cessation of mining in Forest Reserve. Now, Lava Femmes Erastos Asaridanko and his team were attacked whilst filming evidence of this environmental infractions but have managed to file this report. The Asenanyo Forest Reserve is a production forest established in 1940. It covers an area of 22,800 hectares in the Amansia South district of the Ashanti region. About 9,350 football fields of the forest that is 37.78 kilometer square has been given out for mining to Edel Metallum Resources Limited. We set out to investigate the environmental infractions engaged in by the company's mining operations at Esumenya. Though the company has been mining for months, our checks indicate they only obtained a license from the Environmental Protection Agency on October 16, 2024. Contrary to its large-scale mining license regulation, the company has been engaged in unconventional artisanal mining methods similar to that adopted by illegal miners. There are no settling ponds or tailings dams as required by law. Contaminated mining residue is left to flow into tributaries of the Ancobra River and the forest environment contrary to water use regulations. The Asenanyo River, from which the reserve derives its name, is not visible from the mining mess created here. Our team saw indications of the abstraction of clean groundwater into already polluted surface water without the water use permit by the Water Resources Commission. The devastation runs miles into the Asenanyo Forest Reserve. Trees restored under the Ghana Landscape Restoration Project have been pulled down for mining operations. Quest for comment from some known leaders of the company have not yielded any response. The quest of the team to report on the activities of the mine was resisted by a group of armed men claiming to be protecting the concession of Edel Metallum Resources Limited, who physically assaulted the Joy News crew. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaredonko, Esumenya, Amasia South District, Ashanti region. Now, Erastus joins us on phone for further details. Good afternoon, Erastus, and how are you feeling? Please do shed more light on the story. Yes, so what you are seeing is extreme environmental infractions, as you can see. 
pollution of uh, water bodies and uh, gross violation of environmental law. So you could see that um, under the uh, forest restoration project, these trees were grown uh, some years back, and they are as they are maturing. Now this miner is uprooting all the trees that have been grown to restore the environment, and uh, he, he is doing mining that is not conforming to any environmental law. And that was what we sought uh, to report in the in the initial stage. Erastus, so you are confirming that this is the exact story that you were filming before the people attacked you. Exactly, and this is, these are the footages that they prevented us from uh, showing, and so uh, that is why we were assaulted, because they wanted to delete uh, these footages, but somehow uh, we managed to bring it out for the general public to judge what they are doing to even restore forest reserves things that we have paid for with taxpayers' money. And um, before we spoke, uh, you mentioned that the people had wanted you to go and meet the owner of the mining site. Have you been able to meet him, and have you had any conversation of the sort? We have uh, sent messages to some of the owners of this uh, company, but we are yet to receive any response from them. Meanwhile, how are you feeling? I'm okay. Um, I'm currently uh, checking my eyesight with the experts at the hospital. So, but generally, physically, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for bringing this to light. Now, meanwhile, criminologist Dr. Jones Sopokuwari is alarmed that proceeds of illegal mining are being used to acquire weapons to fiercely protect the resource sites of their benefactors. Now, he cautioned that these illegal gangs could escalate into rebellion against citizens, the state, and government machinery. Dr. Wari has been responding to attacks on Lava Thames, Erastos Asaridonko, and his crew by armed men who claim to be working for Idle Metallium Resources Limited, a mining site at Asumenya, close to Monsoon Kron in the Ashanti region. This is very concerning. I mean, this is something all of us have been talking about over the period. But for me, from my, uh, you know, my background as a criminologist and someone who studied a lot of security stuff, look, I'm looking at the patterns that we are observing over the period. And I, I foresee something that is reminiscent of what happened within the Sierra Leonean context some years ago that actually ignited, you know, the kind of civil war that they had. You know, during that time, um, the Revolutionary United Front, which was one of these, which was a rebel group that was supported by, you know, Chastela from Liberia, had to use proceeds of, you know, diamond sites in, in Sierra Leone to fuel the war. So what happened was that something, a resource that the members of, you know, Sierra Leone or citizens of Sierra Leone could actually benefit. These gangs and hoodlums and rebels actually went into those sites you know, and use the diamond proceeds to acquire explosive weapons, to acquire very deadly weapons, and we use it as it were to fight and topple the government of Sierra Leone at the time. And so if I look at the pattern as we have, and, and I've been very fortunate to work with some partners, you know, uh, from outside, where we are trying to, you know, see the movement of guns and weapons within this Galamse side. And, and, and a commission of very serious organized crime within sites, uh, this site, especially in the fact of the fact that, um, you know, terrorists have been trying to infiltrate this site and, and, and use the proceeds to fuel the activities. Okay, and I'm looking at a pattern where we have these guys going into this site and having access to very serious weapons. As to how these weapons get into this site, only God knows. Okay, and they are using that to protect these resources. And I'm of the view that, look, if you are not able to nip this thing in a bag, there can be a time where these guys can get very frustrated and then decide that whoever is in charge of the state and is not allowing them to do whatever they want to do, they can actually have the potency to actually stand against that government and even topple it up. So my worry is that it is not even about this current government per se, but even future government. And I, and. And this government, as it is, must also be very worried because if even they are supposed to continue in power, even after the election, look, and this thing should persist. It is, it is actually something that is 
that is a threat to their very survival as a government. Because those elements in there, if you look at the number of weapons they control and the type of weapons they use, Look, I'm telling you that if there is any point in time these guys should decide to rise up against the state security and the state apparatus, I'm trying to tell you this. These guys will be able to match these people boot for boot. And I'm telling you, our government will be, will be in serious trouble. Election headquarters is brought to you by Precious Soil Platinum Energy, Energizing Dreams, the Chartered Institute of Mac Management Accountants, and the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, now together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, German Ozone Medical Center, Alternative Therapy, Dental, Wellness, and Beauty, Chubbox Technologies, a convenient service, and Youth Bridge Foundation, bridging the gap for positive youth development. We'll be back. Now, presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party, Dr. Mohamed Dubaumia, has ridiculed attempts by the opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, to become a majority in parliament six weeks to the general elections. Now, he believes that the opposition party is scheming at this because it has identified that the NPP will win the presidential elections and have a convincing majority in the next parliament. Dr. Baumia was speaking at a rally in Ho during his campaign tour at the Volta region. weeks to an election and they are all only concern is that they want to be a majority for six weeks when you have been a minority for eight years why what is the rush because they know they have lost the election and they want to test a majority position for six weeks but <laughs> we know that we are going to stay focused. We will not be distracted. We are the majority party and we will be the majority party on December the 7th. Good afternoon, Fred Kwame Asari. Hello, Fred. Uh, sorry. Yes. So where is the vice president currently? Uh, currently, the vice president is at the Skirtle North constituency. He began his tour um, of the Volta region on Sunday. He has so far done about 10 constituencies. So today he will be doing Skirtle North, Skirtle South, Akatu South, and then Central Town constituency. I must say that he has received a resounding welcome or reception at all the constituencies. He visited so far. He himself was surprised by the reception uh, given him by residents of the Volta region. He rounded up yesterday's activities at the whole central constituency where he had he held a rally at the Tume Park and then also commissioned the whole municipal assembly complex. Uh, addressing uh, party people at the whole Tume Park, he mentioned that the NDC is panicking and also knows that it has already lost the election. Seeing the numbers that have come out so far, in their stronghold to um, welcome him, even in late hours. He also expressed optimism that his party, the NPP, will convincingly win the election, and then will also have a majority in the next uh, parliament. So Dr. Bonnier also questioned the end intention of becoming a uh, majority in a few weeks to the election. He thinks that is not... Uh, anything to go by saying they have did i lose fred okay thank you uh, the majority side 
Okay, thank you so much, Fred. Now, still on elections, the Ashanti Regional Branch of the Ghana National Association of Teachers is worried about what it describes as the disorganization within organized labor and the clergy, attributing it to rising political divisions ahead of the 2024 elections. Ashanti Regional Chairman Prosper Titi is warning that the public's continuous visualization of all developments in the partisan manner or in a partisan manner threatens the long fight for national peace and democracy. Now here is a report by my colleague Clinton Yeboa. Election 2024 is barely two months away, and the tension is already building up with heightened political statements and activities. Labor groups that were once united in championing causes like the fight against illegal mining are now divided with some member unions opting out of planned strikes. Contesting prophecies of electoral gains for the two major political parties in the country have been reviewed among the clergy. The Ghana National Association of Teachers, Ashanti Regions, says the seeming disunity among organized bodies thought to be a political now have partisan political undertones that could affect the peace Ghana enjoys. Prosper Techi is the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the Ghana National Association of Teachers. Looking at the current, now the pledge, the men of God we look up to, they are taking sides in this particular election. And that is why we are witnessing counter prophecies. The man of God will give the prophecy, and a different one will also give a counter prophecy. Just because of election 22, 24. Organized labor that need to fund for the welfare of their members, they are divided now. To the extent that we are disorganized, recently look at what happened with a fight against Galaxy. One union saying A, the other also saying B. Organized labor calling strike, calling the strike off. Then at the end of the day, the sub unions, A will go and declare, then the other will come in. And all these people are reading political meanings to whatever that is happening. If care is not taken and we don't work for peace, at the end of the day, let's think of the vulnerable. Prosper Techi made his comments during a peace walk by the Ghana National Association of Teachers Ashanti Region in Kumase. The walk towards a peaceful 2024 election is to commemorate World Teachers Day under the theme, An Eye for an Eye would only end up making the whole world blind and would lead to the destruction of the labor environment. The regional chairman Prosper Techi noted that the peaceful nature of Ghana and political atmosphere over the years should not make Ghanaians complacent. Have you heard any discussion preaching peace? Even the peace council, have you heard from them? We are relaxed. We think we have done it over and over again. And for that matter, it's something we just go through and then come up. But that is not what some of us think. We think that any little can pick up and disorganize the entire nation. That is the reason why we are advocating and bring the attention that we shouldn't be complacent. Although we have peace in our dear nation Ghana, but we can advocate, add our voice to make sure people understand what we mean when we talk about peace. We will never cherish peace until we kiss the world. Reporting for Joy News, my name is Clinton Yeboah. Clinton Yeboah is here with some more on the story. Clinton Yeboah. If you can hear me, why is not concerned about the disorganization within organized labor? Hello, Clinton. All right, MFA. Yeah, I can clearly hear you. So we often say that a divided house cannot achieve anything. And uh, Nat shares in the same saying that if organized labor is disorganized, then how do you present or you make your petitions to government or your concerns to government have a strong backing, which is why they are very much concerned that if organized labor is not presenting a strong force and a united force, then all calls that they, they seek to, to achieve may not be fruitful because, I mean, sometimes it, it demands a backing, a very strong backing to, uh, to get um, policymakers and, you know, influential people to um, take actions um, against certain, certain, I mean, for their concerns. And if these backings are not there because of the division, then there will be no cause to fight at all. And so they're also concerned that the Peace Council is not speaking. Correct. Particularly about Galamsi and also the divisions that it has created among agencies and even government institutions. Um, we are still yet to see an official communication from 
the clergy, not just the Peace Council, the clergy as well, um, condemning or adding a voice to this call, which, is, which has become a national call. And uh, the NAT is worried why the Peace Council, as of now, has not released any communication or joined in the conversation about the illegal mining menace and the, the call for the hot of uh, illegal mining activities. Thank you so much, Clinton Yebo. Now, away from elections, the residents of Kudula and its adjoining communities are excited about the reshaping of their roads, linking them to the rest of the region. Now, these communities were cut off during the peak of the raining season, making it difficult for the people to move to Tamale to assess health care, among other services. Here's Martina Buguri with more. Kudula, Yonda, Trenjili, and its adjoining communities are farming communities in the Tamale South constituency of the northern region with several developmental challenges. One of the challenges these communities face is bad roads. Speaking to Joy News after the reshaping of their roads, the residents said the deplorable state of the roads had isolated the Kudula, Yonda, Trenjili, and their neighbors from the rest of the world. The deplorable nature of our road made it difficult for us to access neighboring communities. We were unable to go to the market, but now we are happy and want to show appreciation to Al Haji Fiseni for the gesture. The chief of Kudula in Yab Kudulana expressed his excitement over the improved road condition, emphasizing the difficulty his people face to navigate the deplorable roads. What I have been yearning for is what you have done for me and my people. We were suffering a lot due to the poor nature of the road. To bring our farm produce home was a big challenge and I made several appeals with no response. Today, I am happy and I am sure my people will reward you for that. The MPP parliamentary candidate for Tamale South, Alaji Fuseni Musa, who is reshaping these rules, reiterated his commitment to bring more development to these areas should he win the election. We were not happy seeing how deplorable the road was. So we decided to come and reshape it for easy motoring for you. This is what a politician who cares for you does. My opponent cannot point to a single developmental project he executed in this town. It is time to kick him out and bring someone who cares for you. I am here to remind you to vote for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and Musa Fuseni for more development. <laughs> Now let's get more from Martina. Martina, so tell me, how will this improve social economic activities in the area? For these people, it's a good thing for them because uh, during the peak of the rainy season, they are unable to come to the Tamale Township, and that's the farming community where they have that sort of uh, produce and need to come into the market. Itself. And so it will build economic activity to help those who are who need to come to access health care as well, and it will open the entire place for business. And so for them, they are excited that they are connected to the region now. Okay, Martina, thank you so much. Thank you for bringing us updates from Tamale. Now, time now for the latest on the National Science and Mars Quiz. And here is Adobe Asari with updates from Cape Coast. <laughs>
today, that's the quarterfinal stage, has come to an end and Tamasco have emerged winners, securing themselves a spot in the semi-finals. You know, um, we have 27 schools battling to secure spots in the semi-finals and only nine can make it through and Tamale have already secured their spot. We have the winners here, we'd like to talk to them shortly. Please join us, the winning team. You know, the, the, the atmosphere here was quite interesting. A certain group was excited and other groups were disappointed, sad and one may say pained. But it all comes with the contest. So, um, without wasting much time, my gentleman, how do you feel? Yes, yeah, I'm feeling very excited because we've managed to win the contest by God's grace. We hope to, you know, improve upon ourselves and come back better in the semifinals. Are you sure you're excited? Because you're speaking so. Are you? Are you? What's going on? Or you are emotional? What's going on? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be reserved, but I'm excited. Okay, so you are reserved there. All right, gentlemen, you tell me how you feel. I actually also feel very happy because um, it's, it's, it's a plus for us to gain the spot to the semi-finals, and we hope that we'll go all the way to finals and win the trophy. Yeah. The trophy. Yes, please. Okay. So um, please come close. You know, you led in the first round, the second round, the third round, but then St. John's took over in the fourth round. Did that put fear in you? How did you feel during that time? No, we, we just knew that we were going to win, so there was no fear. Really? Yeah. You were not intimidated at all? No. We just know that at the end of the day, we are going to carry the day, and that's it. Okay. So today was not really a good day for Accra Academy. However, St. John's gave you a very hard contest. You won with just a two-point gap. Other schools are going to make it into the semifinals as well. How prepared are you for them? And so we've learned our mistakes, and we'll work on them towards the semi-finals and inshallah when we get there those schools will not find it easy don't find it easy yeah please tell us again they won't find it easy don't find it easy do you agree with your colleague he says you are going to do your homework and the other schools will not find it easy what else do you have to add yeah we are the lions and that's it okay the lions and the light of the north i eh? you come what message do you have for the other schools uh, actually as, just as he said we are the lions and you know we always roar wherever we are yeah so we're going to roar in the next stage but I don't feel you are saying it with so much confidence. Like there's a certain fear lurking inside of you. Speak like the man that you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm only saying that. Yeah, the next day we are going to roll like lions. Yeah. All right, so um, there you have it. Tamasco has secured a spot in the semi-finals and they are promising to do their homework, come back harder, make it through to the semi-finals, pass, bypass the semi-finals, make it into the finals and actually win this year's championship. Well, we'll live to see how that will pan out and we'll bring you updates as and when. Amadovia Sari, back to you in the studio, MFA. Adobia, I wanted to actually find out the mood for Akraka particularly, especially because Tamale, they have won and yet I'm not feeling the energy. Please, what is the mood for Akraka? Because I know a few Akraka people are happy. All right, I was hoping to get some comments from Adobia, but guys, do stay for business updates. business on Newsdex. My name is Winston Taki and now to our first business story. IMF is making a case for further hikes in Bank of Ghana's policy rate to check the high levels of inflation in the country. The central bank at its last meeting in September cut its key lending rate to commercial banks by 200 basis points to 27 percent. This is despite inflation rising marginally to hit 21.4 percent for the month of September. Speaking at the launch of the World Economic Outlook Report in Washington, D.C., USA, Deputy Director Jen Magnata noted that some actions need to be taken by countries like Ghana. There has been, over, over the last year, year and a half, there has been some progress uh, in, in the region. You saw uh, inflation uh, stabilizing in some countries going down uh, even and, and uh, reaching close level close to the, to the target, so, but half of them are still, uh, are still at, at, uh, at uh, you know, distance, large distance from the target, and a, th a third of them are still, uh, uh, are still having double-digit inflation. Uh, in terms of growth, as, as Pierre Levy mentioned, uh, it's, it's quite uneven, uh, but it, it remains too low. 
the other issue is, is debt uh, in the region. Obviously, we, uh, it, it, it is still high. Uh, it, has, it, has not increased, it has stopped increasing, uh, uh, and in some countries uh, already starting to consolidate, but, but it's still too high, and, and the debt service is, is correspondingly still, still high in, in, in the region. So the challenge is still there. Uh, there's been some, some progress. Uh, so in terms of the recommendation, uh, in countries where inflation is very high, uh, you, would, you would recommend uh, you know, tight monetary policy and in some cases, uh, when possible, uh, help by, by, by consolidation on, on the fiscal side. Um, it's, it's complicated. It's, uh, in, many, in many countries, um, you know, there are, there are, there are trade-offs, uh, and, and you know, uh, consolidating fiscal is, is difficult when, uh, when you also have to provide uh, for relief, uh, like in Nigeria, for example, due to the flooding. Africa Center for Energy Policy is asking the government to reverse the current directive to exploration firm ENI on unitizing its oil fields with that of Springfield. It comes after an international court rules the government's action raising serious concerns about the directive. But ESEP is now highlighting some contradictions with data submitted to the legal battle with ENI. Ben Bwachi is the executive director for ESEP. The politics really didn't shape mm. uh, the industry in a way that actually attracts the right kind of investment. Mm. Uh, into into the space, mm. and then came in the bigger one, mm. which is the law cases, uh, mm. lawsuits uh, of Ghana. Now you have the major players in the sector, Talo and ENI, mm. all in arbitration. It appears that from your else. from your end at ASEP, you yeah. are picking up fresh data mm. that raises some serious questions about the directive one and what was the basis of us going to court. Can you share that with us as well? So, I mean, when we said that the science was not ready, mm. we were hoping that government would push for more studies on the field mm. uh, to establish that, in fact, that well, the two fields are connected, mm. and two, that the volumes in place are actually commercially viable, you know, so that independently we can verify that those two things are actually cogent. We checked the data that was presented to the government based on which the interdiction decision was taken, now Springfield makes a, decision, a, a presentation to government, and in that presentation, they make a very stark admission, quite you know, subtle, mm. subtle that the volumes that they actually use to go uh, uh, to court, court are actually different from the volumes that they are now claiming on the field, which is far lower. What was presented then mm. and what has been presented now? So in the oil industry, they have what we call oil-water contact. Mm. Because when you put oil in water, the oil will suspend mm. on the water. So you want to know the level of the oil and then how deep before it touches the water. Mm. So the oil water content that was given to government by Springfield mm. before the court case mm. was about 4,130 uh, meters mm. deep. And now in the presentation that they are making for the appraisal program, that volume has now diminished mm. to about 3,900 which actually shows that right from the beginning, they knew that the oil water contact mm. was lower that than the number. We, we can allege for now that they knew, because we cannot independently establish whether No, but they, they, giving, knew, they have given they the data. That they have given the data. Okay, right. <laughs> they, have done, they have not done any other work. Okay. So how now they show that the oil, uh, uh, oil water contact is now 3,900 and not 4,130, should clearly tell government today, if they're actually paying attention and following the science, that they were wrong from the beginning. There is no need to hold on to those directives, the utilization directive. They have to withdraw it. There are people who are actually wanted in Ghana. The, uh, the courts have ruled, uh, uh, you know, chasing the directors of ENI, chasing the directors of um, uh, Vitor mm. and their local partners because of those unitization directives. Yeah. Springfield will be having a presser to answer to this allegation by ASAP. We will bring you that update in our subsequent bulletin. That will be all for business. My name is Winston Taki. Stay tuned for sports after this break. Time for sports on JM today. My name is Haruna Mubarak, and we are three days away 
from the Joy Sports Invitational Tournament set to take place at the University of Ghana Stadium. One of the participants at Dancy Travels is aiming for a clean sweep of trophies after signing up for the event. There's more in this report. Ah, uh, but quick question, quick question. Um, what, what, were you singing High Life or you were doing Jamal? Which one? Which is it? it was Miss Frashen. <laughs> All right. We are a company, we have, we have experienced diverse cultures all over the world. Uh -huh. So what we just did was a fusion of several cultures around the world. So it is not a particular music form. We are going to win this game. And trust me, this is Adanse Travels. We take people all over the world. Qatar we go, right? London we go, right? Doha we go, right? Germany we go, right? Ghana itself is our home. Yeah. And you know, the, where they are playing the mm. match itself, eh? mm. where they are playing the match, eh? it is our home. Yeah. And even today, 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 we are training there. Yeah. We have our full team. We are going there this afternoon to train. We are waiting for you because we are going to fill the stadium. We play the ball. We, we play the ball. We are going to fill the stadium. And I say, and I say travels. Adanse Travels! Adanse Travels! We are here with a camp. Now, um, so, we've heard all sorts of things. There are those who say they've got, um, you know, there are those who say they've got green blood in their system. There are those who say they have special people who are toning their muscles. There are those who also say they have players who are trading in the bush. And there are those who say they have, uh, what, Thomas Partey training their CEO. Okay, what's happening with your CEO? Tell me, because the CEO's penalty shootout is going to be very, very hot. You see, the CEO's penalty shootout, eh? Yeah. I have a special guest who has to speak about it. Uh -huh. And he's here with me, Mr. Michael Jumo. Okay. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right. So, so, at Answer Travels, we are known for exploring the world. All the best places in the world. So I see you. It's at a secret coded location somewhere on the day of the tournament. He's coming in a chartered flight. The chartered flight. So <laughs> wow. And and slot and slot is actually a personal trainer. Eh? We never walk alone. So we have and slot. We have been to Liverpool. The current, the Premier League top test. So how can anybody beat a dance travel? <laughs> All right. Um and that, that interests me a little bit. Um, the ladies, the penalty shootouts and all of that. Uh-huh. Why is everybody walking away? Tell me about it. Um the ladies, the ladies in the other companies also say, look, everybody should forget it. What do you have to tell them finally? Kudu's place in London. Adansi goes to London. In fact, Eben is going to meet Kudu's. Oh. So, how can any lady, how can any lady who's in Ghana here say that they can take better penalties when we go to all the players? In fact, Nico Williams in Spain, we were there. Eh? So all the other companies, they should show us where they have been going. We have international training. <laughs> well, we can also hear from the Labadi Beach Hotel, who are also pumped up ahead of the event.
this is a sporty event, yeah. right? But people will need to find places to lay their heads before they, that, that's true. they come to the Joy Sports Invitational. So why should they come to uh, Labada Beach Hotel? I think that's a very good question that you've asked. And um, I, I'm sure um, that really goes to justify why we have been acknowledged as a CIMG Hospitality Facility of the Year, three years in a row. And for us as a hotel, whatever we do, everybody knows we're in the space of I mean, offering accommodation, um, conferencing, meetings, exhibitions here and there. But we are very, very particular about service. And so service excellence is our hallmark. And um, it tells in, in the food, in our delivery, in terms of how quality our food comes out, how, I mean, our staff are very, very meticulous and very, very particular about dealing with people, the guests. We leave them with experiences, and as they come through, you walk through the, sh the, the corridors of Labadi Beach Hotel, we leave, you but, we leave you with nothing but memorable experiences, and that is the more reason why people need to look out. I'm mean, having some wonderful time here at Labadi Beach Hotel. Asking people to look out, what should we look out from you and your team on Saturday? You know, on Saturday, it's a different level at all. We have been known to be selling rooms, selling, selling food, <laughs> selling tea, selling coffee, as one of my directors will say. But on Saturday, we are going to demonstrate to the entire world, Ghana in particular, what we are known for that people do not know about us. In terms of sporting activities and all the disciplines that have been highlighted, we're going to take part. And I'm telling you as we stand here, I see you, Mr. David Eduardo. Remember, he also currently is a CIMG Marketing Man of the Year. Yeah, yeah. So, so that tells you, I mean, we're very, very particular about this event. We're going to make sure that we sweep all the awards in the various disciplines on Saturday. As we speak now, he is in camp somewhere, and we've brought in Pep Guardiola. <laughs> I'm telling you, Pep Guardiola is in town. Nobody knew about this. And he's training and giving him some tidbits. So when it comes to that CEO's penalty, cakes, you're going to have the best and the most sweetest spot ever from Mr. David Edwafo, our, our managing director. And of course, he's a tennis player. So I'm sure he's going to take on uh, 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 um, one of the CEOs who have been playing tennis uh, in this country. And certainly, I have no doubt in the capabilities of Mr. David Edwafo. He's going to come up tops. People do not know. And as I speak to you now, my MD, who has been on cam, has been released. And he's walking behind us now just to catch a glimpse of what is happening. Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I've, I've, I've seen your men preparing and we are on fire. Come Saturday, you see what Abadi can produce. We are on fire. Even myself, I'm well grounded and I'm trained. If I tell you who has been training me, you will not believe it. Who is training you? Well, 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 well. Pep is here. You know, we have presidential suites. He's one of my presidential suites purposely to train me to take the penalties. Champions League continues tonight and all eyes will be in Spain where, where Barcelona will take on Bayern Munich. That's how we end the sports segment on the AM show. Well, on JM Today, actually, my name is Haruna Mubarak. Welcome back and time now for world news. Now, election observers working for the European Union say some voting results have been doctored in Mozambique. Now, thousands of people joined the position protest on Monday that they were called by independent presidential candidate Benacio Mandalan. He's blaming security forces for gunning down his lawyer, Elvino Diaz, and another political official last Friday. Now, official results from the general election held on held on 9th October, will be announced by Friday. Now also, Britain and German have signed what the UK government is calling a landmark defence agreement aiming at boosting security, investing in and jobs. Under the agreement, German defence company Rheinmetall will open a new factory in the UK to manufacture barrels for artillery guns, supporting 400 jobs. Both countries will work together to develop drones and a new long-range missile. 
That's it for today on Joy News Today. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. Emma Fah Akosia Aditi is my name.